Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This video is nowhere near long enough to express thoughts on the start of this game, so there will be a part two. You can stay tuned for that in the near future. Hello everyone, my name's Pete and I'm on a journey through MMOs to try and change my mind. Up until recently, I would never have bothered to try any as I held the assumption that they were all bad and none of them would be for me. If this journey interests you, then you could hit subscribe and join me on it. I'm also open to suggestions, so please drop them in the comments if you have any. Now, I'm a long time Final Fantasy fan. I'm not a particularly hardcore fan. I've not played them all, but I do like the series. Even 13, I like that one. So I was relieved to find that they were playing some superbly nostalgic music on the main menu, and I love it. I sat here for far too long just to listen to it. Just before I jump in here, I should note that a large portion of this game is free to play if you go straight to the website. Getting it through Steam will cost you, so keep that in mind if you're poor like me. I hit new game and I'm treated to an excellent cinematic. It's classic Square Enix. Lots of flashy imagery, an easy enough to understand story, and the appearance of Bahama. What's not to like? After that, I'm dropped into the character creation page and there are plenty of races to choose from. There's human, cat people, child people, some massive Hulk people, and not dragon but kind of dragon people. For some reason, there's also an option to show your character in their underwear. I'm sure this is appealing to a certain audience, but this just makes me a bit uncomfortable. I'd usually just go with a regular human, but I'm feeling pretty adventurous right now, so I choose the not dragon people. The customization is pretty in-depth and I can even adjust the length of my tail. I make it small so people don't think I'm compensating for something. They can look at the massive horns on my head for that instead. Looking through the faces, it seems you get to choose your favourite flavour of moody Final Fantasy protagonist, so I pick whatever flavour this one is, and I go on to click through the numerous customization options. I spend quite a lot of time here, picking eye colour, choosing hair, and even adding face paint, because it enhances that dark mood that every protagonist in Final Fantasy should wear in their expression. Naturally, I choose a voice based on the sound of the laugh, and I don't anticipate I'll do much speaking since it's an MMO, and then I'm asked to select my character's birthday. Now, I'm sure if I had any knowledge of the calendar here, I could make a law-friendly birthday for my character, but since I don't, I just pick arbitrary words and numbers. After this, I choose a deity, which looks like it's for fluff reasons only, and then it's time to choose a class. The split between Disciples of War and Disciples of Magic. I choose Magic, pick Conjurer almost at random, and then I pick a server. All the servers are full, so I have to wait. When I'm done waiting, I get the most Kingdom Hearts cutscene that has ever existed outside of Kingdom Hearts. There's even a member of Organization 13. The only thing missing here was a Keyblade and being saved by King Mickey. Afterwards, everything goes black and I wake up on a moving cart, moving through trees and... Oh, for God's sake, Todd, you bastard, you did it again. Oh, no, 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 we're okay. The guy asking if I'm awake isn't a Stormcloak. What follows is basically a long cutscene, but there's no voice acting and I have to read and click through everything. This is fine. As I mentioned, I'm a fan of Final Fantasy games, so this feels normal. Then some stupid moogle starts blowing an air horn down my ear and asks if I'm feeling better now. No, you idiot. Stop blowing that thing before I pop your bauble. If being able to see and hear that makes me special, then I choose normality. Some more exposition later, and a mysterious looking figure brings the cart to a halt. We're informed that there's a battle happening nearby and that we should leave. I thought this was going to be my combat tutorial, but it wasn't. We see some fighting happen as we bravely flee the scene. This is a slow paced opening, but that's typical of Final Fantasy and JRPGs in general, and I'm settled in for the ride. Eventually, we reach our destination, and the man who hasn't stopped blabbering at me for the whole trip tells me that I need to exceed everyone's expectations so that he can brag about meeting me, and so I intend to deeply disappoint him. Not on purpose, really, but disappointment is the only thing I'm good at. And now it's finally time to be given control of my character. And whoa, that is a lot of buttons. This tutorial is going to need to be good if I'm going to understand this. There's a pop-up window already here, offering to take me to a play guide in my browser. Now this is either really helpful, or it's an admission from the game that I will need to follow a wiki in order to have fun. It's a bit concerning, but I'll just ignore it for now. I'm shown how to interact with NPCs, and accept quests by clicking on someone dressed like the warrior I encountered in the woods. The quest reward is 103 gil. This is such an annoyingly specific amount, and I can't help but be angry at it. I'm pointed to a building just up the road and given an awful lot of exposition. I'm signing up to work with a guild of some sort who will provide me with quests to help the general public. I, I think that's the gist of it. I'm told that the opening cutscene that we saw was an event in recent history referred to as the Calamity, and the saviours of the world have for some reason been collectively forgotten. Nobody can remember the names or faces and simply refer to them as the Warriors of the Light. Then I need to sign the paperwork to finalise my membership of the guild, and apparently it's important that I use a real name and not a joke alias. How dare you? I am Pete Smells of the well-established Smells family. You will rue the day that you ridiculed my honourable name. Then some more people in those weird masks tell me they don't like me, but join the club boys, I'm already the chairman. These folk are known as wood whalers, and they're responsible for the protection of these lands so far as I understand. 
This has been about 40 minutes of exposition and zero gameplay, but I'm not even mad. The world is stunning and the dialogue, whilst not voiced, it's fine. I'm being told the story at a nice pace. This isn't anything I wouldn't expect from a Final Fantasy experience, and that's kind of important here because I don't want to be super aware that I'm playing an MMO. After this interaction, it turns out I've done just enough to level up. There's no sign of a talent or skill system yet, and that's a bit of a relief because as soon as that stuff appears, I usually get anxious about optimal builds. I don't want to worry about optimization, but if it exists, then it's expected of you in the late game, and that puts me off ever wanting to reach end game content. Spreadsheet box ticking is not a fun adventure for me. Now I'm given my first quest or task sort of thing. It's simple exploration for now. I need to learn about the fast travel system, visit my class guild or trainer equivalent and find a market, presumably for a shopping and equipment tutorial. So far, I've had a lot of text dumps explaining the UI. It's functional, but it's not the best way for me to learn personally. I usually play games while I'm tired after a full day's work, so I lose focus when there's too many words that are not pulling me along a narrative. It's a lot to remember without practical use to back up what I'm being told. I'm also told about a mentor system that experienced players can opt into to choose to help new players. And whilst this is a nice feature, I was once flamed by someone with a similar role in World of Warcraft, and I just generally don't trust the internet to be nice, just because an icon above the head says they are. So I set off to find my three targets and just look at all the players. I didn't see nearly this many playing World of Warcraft. I find the fast travel system which involves these massive crystals and it just so happens to be my favourite fast travel mechanic. You find the point to unlock it for the future. This receives my seal of approval. The return home spell has a shockingly short cooldown of 15 minutes which is very lenient and perfect for me because I get lost easily. The standard has usually been about an hour. While wandering I come across a smaller crystal which is part of something called the Ethernet. While this is also a fantastic pun, it's actually a smaller fast travel method for within the cities. This is very convenient and I like it a lot. I'm given a small explanation on how to use items, but not told how to access my inventory to get them. I take an educated guess and hit I, and I'm correct. I'm already developing an MMO sense of generally conforming features. This is personal growth, and it's important to nobody except me. I also accept a couple of side quests, and I honestly could have guessed it, but they are kill X and deliver X to Y quests. There's no real escape in it, but I don't mind yet, I just want some reasons to look around. My next stop is the marketplace where I get some small tutorials on things like handing over items where I have to manually drag quest items from my inventory into a box. Why? The only reason for this to exist is if I have the option to deliver the wrong items to people at some point. But why would I do that? And if I had reason to, then why would it need to be a universal mechanic? Maybe this will make sense later on. Oh, and someone walks past here with the name Shoebox, and my god, I find that way funnier than I should have. The man explaining the marketplace shows me two identical rooms that are apparently very different. This is not useful visually, and probably be one of the things that would benefit from being in text, with just a set of directions. I'm not trying to nitpick here, it's just something that strikes me as odd. I have a browse in the shops for some stuff, but for the most part, I don't really know what I'm looking at or if it's any use to me. So I go back to the NPC because he still has an icon over his head. He presents me with the task of getting some items off the various vendors and taking them to someone. When I talk to each shopkeeper and mention the guy's name, they get scared or mad. This guy obviously runs the local mafia because they are all terrified of him. I couldn't help noticing here how beautiful the buildings look at night. It took me by surprise. In fact, the whole game is stunning. Part of me always assumed that MMOs would have a cheaper look for some reason, and I don't even know why I thought that. Something's really bothering me about this handover system. The box tells me exactly what I need to hand over, so why do I have to go and find it in my inventory? Searching through my inventory is for buying and selling, but this is just weird. I have the item, just take it. No other game makes me do this unless I have to solve a puzzle or give items in a certain order, but I can't hand over the wrong item, so why do I have to do it myself? It's a, it, this is a tiny little issue, but it really bugs me. I decide to look up my Kill X quest and get a bit turned around looking for the central shroud. I'm struggling to read the map and the area transitions are a bit disorientating. It'd be nice if the transition tunnels had some kind of text or tooltip telling me where I was going without pulling up the map. That would help me not get lost as much. I finally reach a gate to the central shroud, but it's not accessible to me. Apparently, I'm not good enough for this exit, but my quest is out there, so why can I accept it if I can't get there? Don't worry, after a bit more wandering, I found out that I just went to the wrong gate, obviously. I get outside and I'm given the battle tutorial. This is also delivered as a text dump. Luckily, it's very straightforward and basic MMO controls, so I don't have too much trouble. I have noticed that I'm playing the same press and wait playstyle that I had in World of Warcraft, but I am a magic user and I need to expect a slow start. This is something I was too quick to judge in World of Warcraft, and I'll reserve my judgement for it until I've got more experience with the combat. I receive a piece of equipment and I try to equip it, and that's when I find out that the game runs a bind on equip system, and I hate bound item systems in games. If someone could explain to me why they're important, then please go ahead, but binding items to my account or a character should be a choice for almost everything. 
with the exception of unique items and even then I'd like the choice to unbind it and pass it on for profit or otherwise. You inevitably outscale 99% of the equipment that you get in MMOs just by the very nature, so only having the option to sell them to NPCs doesn't make use of the fact that you're in a world with thousands of other people. I also unlock an achievement here because of course no game is complete these days without the dopamine hit of achievement unlocked. The combat is nice to look at, the animations are good, the magic splash you know, but right now it's a little bit simple. I'm keeping in mind how early this is and how many empty slots there are on my UI, and I'm willing to let the game introduce the complexity to me slowly. While fighting, I hear rather heavy footsteps and I find a big stumpy tree marching around. It's level 12 and looks pretty intimidating, so I decide against fighting it. In the woods there's a purple icon on the map, which is apparently marking a quest. The recommended level is slightly above mine, and since I don't know if I can outskill the level system, I decide against accepting for now. The looting system is automatic. You never see the loot, you just get text notifications of what you're receiving. I'm not against this at all. I would normally loot anything anyway, so this just cuts out extra clicking. But it also runs in contrast to that damn manual handing over of items. I'm sorry to keep going on about it, but what the hell is it for? So far, I'm having a really good time. I haven't done much actual playing, but the world is interesting and really nicely crafted, and I know my place in it. I'm nobody special. Well, not outside of being able to see and hear Moogles, which has offered me zero benefits. But I know what to do to progress. I need to knuckle down and do my jobs, and that's fine for now. For finishing one of my quests, I get to choose a reward. One of the rewards is a pointy wizard hat, and yes, I would love a pointy wizard hat. But it turns out I'm not a high enough level to wear it. So my goal, for this first time playing, is to reach a point where I'm able to wear that hat. I then learn about the armoury chest, which is a mass storage for your equipment. Apparently, anyone can play any class just by changing their items, so the armoury chest is a place to store the vast amount of things you'll need in order to be kitted out for every class. This is an excellent addition, as it promotes player choice on the same character and provides the storage and means to do so. I'm sure there are plenty of games out there that would have opted to sell that storage solution at a premium instead. I finally make my way to the Conjurer's Guild, and there I receive a huge text dump about the history of Conjurers, which I didn't find all that interesting or useful. I don't mind reading all the text, but in this beautifully crafted world, the game does itself a disservice by not providing visual storytelling as often as possible. This could have been shown in a series of magical imagery with some narration of, or with artwork as a mural or a book. But at any rate, I have my information and I'm told I can take my first steps in the guild. But I'll do that later. For now, I want to report back on my initial three tasks. By this time, I've got a better grasp on reading the map and I find my way there, only getting lost once. I tell the nice lady that I did what I was asked to do, and she tells me that I'm to go and see another instructor. Also, I level up now, and I can wear my pointy hat. Mission accomplished. When I get to the next instructor, I'm given a couple of simple tasks, and I learn about fate quests. Fate is an acronym for Full Active Time Event. These are dynamic events that players can take part in in the world. Just being in the area qualifies you for credit for the fate, and they feature a level synchronizing system to make sure everyone involved is on the same playing field. After turning in my tasks, I'm told that I'll need to get better gear to continue, and I think I've played enough to make my decision now. This is a good game. I fully recognise that this is the equivalent of looking at a drink on the shelf of a shop and saying that I like it. I am so early in the game, how could I possibly know? But I've not run into any problems yet. The world is beautiful. The story is being told at a nice pace from a sensible beginning. The combat hasn't evolved yet, but the UI shows me that it is definitely going to, and everything works as it should. I've seen zero red flags that would tell me I'm on the brink of wasting my time by pushing through an experience I won't enjoy. I'll be back with more of this game when I get the chance to play more, because I think this deserves way more of my time and thought. The problem with this is that I maybe have 8 hours a week to play games, and I use a good portion of that making these videos. If you're interested in how I get on with this and other MMOs in the future, then please consider hitting subscribe so you can join me for the journey while I explore all these games that are new to me. And please give me some of your thoughts on this and other MMOs in the comment section. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.